Hi, welcome to the tutorial on the normal curve, z-scores, and probability. First, let's do a quick recap of the information needed to fully understand z-scores and how it relates to probability. First, the properties of a normal curve. So we have to remember that a normal curve or a normal distribution is used for continuous or interval and ratio data. We remember that the properties indicates that it is symmetric, so the same on both sides, bell-shaped, and a distribution in which the mean equals the median and equals the mode. And this is a very, very important distribution because this is the model for many naturally occurring phenomena and is used a great deal in inferential statistics. A normal curve is typically defined by its mean and standard deviation. So that means there's an infinite family of normal distributions that can occur. So you can have something that's very peaked to something that's more wide. So what we have to do is to convert this infinite family of normal curves to the one standard normal curve. And then that standard normal curve, we have a mean that always equals zero and a standard deviation that is always equal to one. Now we're going to shift and we're going to think about individual scores within these distributions. And we can transform any individual score to a z-score using this formula here. And this formula takes the difference between an original raw score and the mean and divides that by the standard deviation. And you can see that the formula is written in the notation for populations. But the same formula can be applied to samples. All we do is change the notation. So z-scores tell us the number of standard deviations an individual score is above or below a mean. So why are z-scores important? There are two main reasons why they are important. One, a raw score by itself does not necessarily provide information about its position in a distribution. And number two, standardizing different distributions allow us to make comparisons across these distributions. So now we're going to move into the topic of probability in the context of the normal curve. According to the empirical rule, we expect that 68% of the individuals will fall between one standard deviation to the left and right of the mean. As we move outward from the mean, we expect 95% of the individuals will fall between two standard deviations to the left and right of the mean. And last, then we expect that 99%, that is most, of the individuals in a given distribution will fall between three standard deviations to the left and right of the mean. We use these known proportions for understanding the connections between z-scores, probability, and later on for determining what is considered a typical or atypical value given a certain distribution. So now let's walk through an example. Let's pretend that I have a whole population of SAT scores with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. The question we might ask that's related to probability is, what is the probability of randomly selecting an individual from this population with a given mean of 500 and standard deviation of 100 who has an SAT score of greater than 700? And you can see the notation here of how we would write that. What is the probability of a score that is greater than 700? The first thing we would do is we would look at this in relation to a proportion question. So I would translate this to a question that's phrased as a proportion. An example of that might be, out of all possible SAT scores, what proportion is greater than 700? The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw a population distribution with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. And I'm going to shade in the area that is to the right of the 700, meaning scores that are greater than 700. So this bar here is going to indicate the mean, and the mean is going to be 500. 
and then this would indicate your one standard deviation, so that would be 600, and this would indicate 700, which is the score that we are interested in knowing about. So, the proportion of the curve that I'm interested in is going to be this shaded portion right here. Individuals who have scores that are greater than 700. So this shaded area is the proportion that I am interested in. The next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to identify the exact position of x equals 700 by converting it into a z-score. So if you remember, you remember that a z-formula using a population is going to be z equals an x minus mu, which indicates the population mean, divided by the population standard deviation sigma. And when you work this all out, filling in 700 for x, 500 for mu, and 100 for the sigma, you have a z-score that equals a positive 2. Now, using the known proportions of the area under the standard normal curve, which is this depiction I showed you earlier, what, how are we going to use this to identify that proportion? So we know that that z-score for a score of 700 is going to be 2. So hence the proportion of scores that are greater than 700 is going to equal the proportion of scores that are greater than a z-score of positive 2. In this case, let's look right here. We can mark this is the 2, this represents our 700. And so what's the area that's to the right of the 700? This value right here, and we're going to now add that to this value right here. These two values together indicate this entire area to the right of a z-score that is greater than, of a score that's greater than a z of 2. And so when you add those together, what do you get? You get a proportion of 0.228. Now this is simple when you have a z-score that's equal exactly to 2, but what happens when you have a z-score that's not as pretty or not as easy as just a 2? What we then use is we use the unit normal table. We use a table of all of these given proportions. So let's go ahead and turn to Appendix B, which is on page 699, and you will see something called the unit normal table. And instead of always trying to figure things out from this graph that I showed you, we use this table instead. And that table is going to give us all of the different kinds of information we need to know about proportions. Now let's use the same exact example, but we're going to use the table to figure out our proportions. Again, same example. We have SAT scores, a population of them, with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. I still want to ask the question, what is the probability of randomly selecting an individual from this population who has an SAT score of greater than 700? So now let's take a look at our unit normal table. You can see that it has different columns. It's going to ask you B, proportion in body, C, proportion in tail, or D, proportion between mean and Z. And you can see those graphical representations of those different columns above it. You see those normal distribution graphs with the shading? That's what B, C, and D indicate. So now, how do we know which column on the table to use? We know that we want to look at the scores that are above 700. And 700, in this example, is a z-score of greater than 2. So let's look at that. So we're going to be looking at that same proportion so this one to the right of this. So same proportion. So this is our z-score of 2, of a positive 2, right here. Okay, so we know that that's the z-score, and we want to know 
everyone that falls beyond that z-score. What does this match up to in terms of the graphical representations on page 699? We see that it probably looks like on that very first graph on the left hand side the marked portion called tail and that's going to be C. So therefore we're interested in the proportion, that shaded proportion that is represented by the tail and that's going to be in the C column. So now let's go ahead and look for a z-score of 2. We can see on column A that's where all of the z-scores are listed. So we're going to flip the page until we find a z-score of 2 and I find that on page 701 at the very top on the right column a z-score of 2. Now we know that I'm interested in the proportion in the tail in column C. So let's go ahead and look that up. It's When I look that up, it is 0 0.0228. And indeed, that is the same as what we would have figured out using the graph. Now as you do your examples, you will see that you can look up any z-score and any proportion. And that is all going to be listed on this table. We do not have to rely on that graph of the 68%, the 95%, and the 99%.